Welcome to Quail's Knitting Nest. My name is Joy and this is my nest. You're welcome here anytime. I want to show you what I'm wearing today which I just finished two days ago I think. This is the cardigan bulky Aran coat, cabled coat cardigan <laughs> that I'm making, that I made for my mother-in-law. I talked about it the past couple of episodes and now it's finished. It's made out of this cloud spun yarn by Mary Maxim. I only made two modifications on this sweater. The first was the original called for seed stitch throughout the body. And I just wasn't into uh, doing miles and miles and miles of seed stitch. So I modified it to what some people call sand stitch which is a very simple uh, knit three purl one and then on the up, uh, off rows you just purl all the way across. So it's much simpler and faster to knit and I think it gives you kind of the same or a similar visual look as seed stitch without nearly as much work. I sewed the, uh, or knit the cable bands since the last time, and then I attached them, sewed them to the body. The other modification I made was I made it two inches shorter. So if you can imagine, it was supposed to be like this long, which I think is, well, it's, I don't wear sweaters that long. And I haven't seen my mother-in-law in a sweater that long either that I can recall. So I just shortened it up because I didn't think it needed to be that long. Those are the only two modifications. I changed the stitch here and I shortened it a little bit. I did the smallest size. I usually wear a medium, sometimes a large. And my mother-in-law is smaller than I am. <clears throat> so I chose to do the small size. Now on me, the sleeves are too short. I couldn't do this. I would have had to make them at least two inches longer. I'm hoping it fits her. I'm hoping the sleeves aren't too short for her. I won't know though till Christmas because that's when I'm giving it to her. <laughs> so as you can see the cable band goes up and around the back. It's just one long cable band all the way down and then uh, sewn on. So I'm pretty happy with the way it turned out. I just hope it fits her fine. And that's that. Took like three weeks, I think. Now I'm going to show you level three of the master's hand knitting class. This is the final magnum opus of the master hand knitting hand knitting course. <clears throat> I finished this it says January 30th of 2007. So I had been knitting for seven years by then. Finished it up. Woohoo! So in this one there were two book reviews Two magazine reviews, you know, that I had to write. Oop. Book reviews, magazine reviews. There was another list of questions you had to answer. So, for example, <clears throat> what is a provisional cast on and when would you use it? What is a tubular cast on and when would you use it? Uh, why should you check your gauge while you're in the middle of your project? Uh, <coughs> excuse me. What's the difference between slip stitch and mosaic? 
what can you do to avoid a jog in a circular project? Can you lengthen a sweater that's too short? Or too long? We already talked about that a couple of episodes ago. Alright, so my first swatch for this was I had to do a tubular, bind, a tubular cast on and a tubular bind off. So if you already know how to do this, you can be a level 3 master knitter. This was the double central double de decrease, which you find often in lace patterns or frequently at the top of a tam. If you can do a central double decrease, you can be a level 3 master knitter. SSP, not a lot of people use the SS slip slip pearl SSP uh, decrease, but if you're having to do left slant slanting decreases on the reverse side or the back side, then it's a handy decrease to know how to do. So if you're having to do it every single row instead of every other row, which is common, an SSP is a handy decrease to know. There's an alternate to it called the Pearl 2 through the back loop. Pearl 2 together through the back loop. And it gives you the same thing, and that's another swatch. More yarn overs. A lot of people are really into brioche now. So the brioche swatch that they have you do for level 3 is called, what they call double brioche. But I've seen it listed in other patterns as honeycomb brioche. I just love this stitch pattern. I've always wanted to make a sweater out of this. Can you imagine how warm it would be? I think I'd have to do it in fingering weight yarn, and then because it's brioche, it would take twice as long. <laughs> oh my gosh, I can't imagine. But I just love the fabric that it makes. It's so pretty. So it, I guess it's... I'm not a huge brioche knitter, but I'm assuming it's called double brioche because in single brioche, you just have like columns that look sort of like knit one pearl, one ribbing. So you have columns of knits going up. In this double brioche, the knits and the, and the slips alternate. They go back and forth. So stitch one, stitch three, stitch two, stitch four, and it gives you that honeycomb look. It's really pretty. So in this level, they do a couple of things. They tell you, um, make a herringbone swatch. Tell us where you got the pattern from, write the pattern out, and then knit it. So here's a herringbone. I actually made a sweater using this very stitch pattern, and I loved it. It was a great sweater. And then other things they tell you to do is here, we have a pattern for you. Just knit it. I'll show you one of those later. There's smocking stitch, if you've ever done smocking stitch. If you can smock, you can be a level 3 hit master hand knitter. This is um, what they call elongated stitch, or some people call them drop stitches. I've seen a lot of scarf patterns using this stitch. It's really pretty. This particular one is called Sea Foam. They also do twisted stitches, or what they, or what you sometimes call Bavarian knitting. So this is another one of those where you find the pattern, you write the pattern up, and tell us where you got the pattern from, and then you knit it. This one was from. Oh yeah, there, I had a book of Christmas stockings, and there was a stocking, one stocking in that book had uh, Bavarian stitch patterns all the way up it, and this is just a section of the chart. It's kind of tricky to work. I wouldn't exactly call it fun knitting, but it comes out so pretty. But after you get used to it, and there's different ways to work the twisted stitches. I have since learned that there are some simpler ways than the way I originally did it. 
This would make it work up faster. Oh, and here we have Entrelock. If you can do Entrelock, you can be a level 3 hand Master Hander. Oh, I can't get it back into the sleeve. Okay. Here we go. Slip stitches. S slip stitches and striping together in the same pattern. And again, like, I just flipped through my books, found one that I liked, picked it, knit it, wrote up the pattern for it. And then after slip stitch, then comes mosaic knitting, which is a subset of slip stitch knitting. A mosaic knitting is what I used in that ear warmer headband. Ah, so, and then they had us. Uh, you have to learn how to read a chart in order to pass level three, and you had to list up various knitting symbols that are used in charts. And you could pick anything from wherever. So then you have to find a pattern that either is charted or you chart it, and then you knit a pattern from the chart. So there's no written directions at all. My my instructions say cast on 23 stitches, work the chart twice. <laughs> That's the extent of my pattern writing and this is what the one that I used. Bind off, weave in ends. I've heard that Japanese stitch patterns are, are like that a little bit. I've, I've never used them or seen one of the books up close in person but I've heard that they're like that. It's very simple and it's mostly just charted so that even if you don't speak Japanese, you could do a Japanese knitting, knitting pattern. Here we go, intarsia. Here again, I had to find the pattern, write it, and knit it up. So intarsia, I think it's almost always done from a chart. I can't think of one intarsia pattern that's done from written instructions. Because if you've done, oh, I can't get my thing open. If you've done intarsia, it would be very time consuming to write up the written instructions. So here's my chart, which I made up. And then here's my swatch. This was the first and only intarsia I did for a very long time because, well, it was my first one. I had never done it before, which as I have said before, the reason I took the master hand knitting class was to learn a lot of new techniques, which I was doing because most of these things in the level three course, I did not know how to do. So I learned the intarsia and discovered it's actually quite time consuming managing all the ends and switching between the colors. and I was surprised at how long it took me to make this swatch. And after I did that, I had no interest in Tarja, really. In fact, to this day, I'll sometimes do very small in Tarja pieces, but it's not my favorite thing to do. Duplicate stitch. A lot of people use duplicate stitch. Well, it's hard to see because it's pink on white, but you can do duplicate stitch. You can be a master hand there. Short rows. This was the one, well, I think there's more than one, but this is the prettiest one. This is the most awesome one where they gave the pattern and then I had to knit it. Oh my goodness, it just came apart. Okay, look at this. It's like a little lace doily.
have since seen quite a few shawls and blankets, not to mention doilies, but shawls and blankets that start with a little central motif like this and then they just grow and grow and grow until they're, you know, as big as you want. But circular shawls or circular blanket, I thought this was so pretty. I think I've done a circular blanket. I've not done a circular shawl yet. But I may have done a, like a circular baby blanket. I can't remember. Anyway, very pretty. Another report, I did do a fiber report and another blocking report. I had to do a blocking report for the level one. And then I had to do another one for level five. And then to cap off the level level five, level three, uh, there were two projects. You have to make a hat and a sweater. At the time that I took the class, you could choose one had to be fair aisle and the other had to be Aaron or cabled. Since I was inexperienced with stranded knitting, I chose to do the smaller project, the hat, in Fair Isle, and then I did the larger project, the sweater, with the Aran patterns. Unfortunately, I gave this hat to my mother, and this is pre, this, this was 2006 that I was working on this. This is before Ravelry was even around, I think, and I didn't join Ravelry until 2008. So I only have one horrible picture, which you can't even really see the hat. But the point of the picture was to send to them showing that, yes, the hat fits me and I can wear it. It's a usable item. So here's the picture. <laughs> Let's see. There you go. Basically, the only thing you can tell from the picture is that uh, it's green. <laughs> It was greens and blues with a pop of yellow. And I have the pattern right here because I had to write this pattern what had to be an original pattern. I had to write the pattern, not just copy it from somewhere else, but write it and knit it, submit it. So I have the pattern right here. And I could always make another one, I suppose. But my mother has the original right now. She wears it. That was my hat. For the cardigan, same thing. I had to research, write it. It had to be an original pattern. I couldn't use somebody else's pattern. Write up the pattern, knit the pattern, and then submit it. I, I mailed in the entire sweater and they looked at it and then they mailed the sweater back and then I had to submit a picture of me wearing it to show that it fit me. So here's the picture. It's difficult to tell. You can't really see all the cabling that's in there. And this sweater I no longer have kind of sad, but even though it basically fits, all the sweaters I have now fit so much better that I stopped wearing this one. I never wear it anymore. But that was the piece of resistance. That was the topping off of my level three class. And then at the very end is my list of references. Every book, every magazine, whatever that I used for the entire class. So, this, and here's my certificate. You passed. Level three. Yay. So, as you see, a lot of the things in here, if you can do them... You could be a level three master hand knitter. I understand that writing and knitting your own pattern could be a little daunting. However, I want to encourage you, if you've knit a hat, if you've knit lots of hats, you could probably write your own hat pattern. 
Same thing with sweaters. If you don't have a lot of sweater experience, that might be a huge mountain to climb. It might be a goal. But on the other hand, if you have knit a lot of sweaters and you kind of know how they're made, even if you haven't, you have all the resources at your fingertips, you could do it. If anyone wants to take the master hand knitting class, if you have any questions, let me know. Tell me down in the comments. I would be happy to give you advice or encouragement. Even if you just want to learn something, maybe something I went through in the book that you've never done before. I would encourage you to do it. It's fun. What am I working on now? I took the uh, skeins from last time that I opened and wound them up. This is what they look like wound. So this one was the Hue Loco. And this one was the King Fibers Bedrock Soft and Springy. And I am swatching with them. This is how far I've gotten. Not too far. So I'm swatching with them to figure out how I'm going to make a baby sweater out of it. Stay tuned. We just found out that we have another four weeks under our stay-at-home order. Now it's been extended to June 4th. More time for knitting. Let me know how you're doing down in the comments. And until next time, take care. Bye-bye.